Hi there, and welcome back to a Weird Tales Talk video. I haven't done one in a while, and we're doing things a little bit differently, as in, you see my hands now? <laughs> uh, previously, I just had a blank screen, and it's not going to get much more interesting than seeing pages without pictures. So if you just want to listen, I suggest that's also good. I just thought I'd try something different. Uh, so basically, in this story, in this video series, I just look at... A weird tale doesn't have to be from Lovecraft so you can recommend one to me if I have it I'll read it and then I give my thoughts with spoilers about the weird tale and uh, always looking at it from a Lovecraftian point of view um, I also always do a lot of notes and that's basically what I want to discuss I'm not really gonna go through the plot and I assume you've read the story if you haven't read the story Check the video description, I leave a link where you can read it for free and I think you'll enjoy the video a lot more if you know the plot. Uh, so basically, um, this is kind of an interesting tale in that it's it was ghost written by Lovecraft and judging by the language used in the tale, it's almost all uh, Lovecraft's uh, writing. It's not coming from the other party, which was Hazel Held, he ghost wrote it for her in uh, 1932. I did my research there, but uh, it's a longer tale, not super long, but it's longer than, for example, Dagon. Uh, I've done my notes here as well. Uh, it's interesting in that it features a lot of name dropping. This was written in 1932, so Lovecraft had done a lot of writing already. So he had characters to mention, you know. Um, the Oxithoth, for example, pops up, mention of Cthulhu pops up. Uh, Tsithogwa, which was created by Clark Ashton Smith, of course, but um, nonetheless, mentioned, nonetheless mentioned, but also some creatures, I don't know, um, I'm almost embarrassed to say, but Chaugner Saugen, I've never heard of this, well, maybe I have, but I have no idea what that is referencing to, maybe that's also coming from another writer besides Lovecraft, that's my uh, guess. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a fun story, it really is, uh, because it has a lot of fan service, basically. I think I even wrote that down somewhere there. Um, it's sort of stock standard, in a way, in that uh, guy goes in blue-pilled, as I wrote here. Oh, this can't be all real, this horrific stuff, and then the cultist character is like, yeah, it's real, believe me. I'll s you stay in the museum for one night, and you'll see. And he's like, oh, shit. And then he becomes red-pilled at the end. Um... The cultist dies, and then, yeah, you know, as it is with Lovecraftian horror, even if you survive, you are changed, because you realize things. And there's a lot of references to things that the cultist character explored in his time to create this museum, because uh, the spoiler is that the creatures in this wax museum, by the way, are actually preser uh, preserved remains. They are not just... Um, coming from the imagination, which is what you'd expect from a wax museum. But these are actually preserved things. It's kind of like the twist in... Uh, um, oh, shit. The, the twist in Pickman's model, where the photo is actually real life. You know, So that's kind of cool. I like that twist. Um, the story was also the one that was making me think of how cultists communicate with the, with the, uh, the horrors out there, you know? Um, and I said in my one of my videos recently was that um, weaker minds are more likely to be influenced by the horrors and become cultists and worship, whereas other minds are more likely to be disgusted and want to destroy the entities uh, of the mythos. For example, here um, the dog is given as a, a sacrifice, right, to uh, Rantegoth, which is the main creature here. And then he sees it, and he sees how this dog, okay, it's just a dog, but still, how it died, right? And then he says here, electrified with a pure loathing, which conquered his mounting disgust, Jones sprang with a cry, and Jones is the protagonist. And then he says later on, after seeing a photo of Rantegoth, for the utterly satanic force, the object depicted had an almost hypnotic effect. So what happens later on in the story is that um, George Rogers, the cultist, he wants to worship it. He calls it a god, basically, and, and he calls himself its slave, 
he is the slave of this creature and the high priest the hero Stephen Jones he wants to destroy it so that's what I wrote here <laughs> actually what did I write there the issue of how cultists communicate versus the ubermensch yeah so that's kind of like the two types of characters you'll see in a, a Lovecraft story when it comes to humans um, I think he definitely wrote this all this all has his writing in it so sometimes with the ghost written stuff you think oh is it going to be diluted Lovecraft I don't want that I think for this one since he ghost wrote it he did everything in his way there's a sense of immense age in the story of, of the things that are happening you know um, there's a lot of references to uh, previous events this cultist went on in his discoveries you know uh, of these creatures that he has in his museum so there's always that talk of um, elder law for example you know you know the, the things from a long time ago that is dwarfing humanity yeah it's uh, it's very atmospheric in this kind of way um, I kind of wonder if this the story actually influenced Fantasy Flight to make that Elder Sign Omens uh, game because that was also set in a museum, and the museum here is described very, very morbidly. You know these dark areas of the museums shut off to the public, you know that type of thing. Uh, but Rante Goth is well, let's just discuss this character. I'll put a picture up of what it's supposed to look like. Uh, I think here you can also pause the screen. And have a look. Oh, there we go. Of the description. I thought it's funny in here that Lovecraft says, "For nothing, even roughly corresponding to it, has ever come into the imagination of sane mankind," and that, you know, describing it with ordinary vocabulary would be impossible. And then he goes on to describe it in ordinary vocabulary. <laughs> oh, Lovecraft. He sometimes gets criticized for that. But Ryan Tegoth, my theory about this creature, right, um, is that it's using people to feed it. So George Rogers is overwhelmed by this desire to feed Ryan Tegoth with sacrifices, any living creature. So it took a dog, uh, but it he wanted to feed it the cultist guy wanted to feed it um humans later on so my theory is that rantegoth kind of influenced this weak mind right uh the weak mind of the cultist character to bring it nourishment kind of like um what's it that fungus that grows on the ants and it kind of like controls the ants behavior for its own benefit kind of like this so rantegoth is actually nothing that impressive sure it's horrific to look at as it was described here and the character faints a few times actually but um, it's seen later on the way I understood it is that there was this the uh, so what happens is that the cultist is eaten by Rantegoth right and then the the assistant who's like this swarthy foreigner you know that Lovecraft likes to describe was shot uh, see so the only other people in the museum at the time, so the main character, he escapes, but Roger stays behind to get eaten, and this Ourobona guy is the swarthy foreigner. He comes in and he sees, oh shit, my boss, he got devoured. And then he hears pistol shots, and then Ourobona previously desired to shoot Rantegoth, but at the end you see that Rantegoth is basically on display with the mangled corpse of uh, Rogers all done up in wax. So this is a very weak character it seems to me. He was able to be killed with a handgun or maybe it fell asleep just like uh, Cthulhu did, you know. He's like, oh shit, not much is happening, I'll go back to sleep. Because uh, when they discovered Rantagoth originally, the cultist, it was dormant. So maybe it just didn't have enough nourishment and it went to sleep. Maybe like the creature from Creep, uh, Jeepers Creepers, which I fucking love that film. So, it's a very weak creature. I think it just takes over the mind of weak characters and it tries to feed off of them. Use them to draw other things uh, to eat, you know. I saw this concept in a film, two films actually, recently. The first one is coming from my buddy there, uh, In These Goings Down. He's a YouTuber. Uh, I really get, get along with him well. He made a, a film, I'll link it down below as well, where his character in the film has to feed this thing in a basement. So basically he's sort of enslaved by it. And then 
Another film was AM1200, which I reviewed very early on in my channel. Uh, about a creature that also sort of takes over the will of, of an, a, a human and makes them a slave to bring food to it. So I think it's nothing at all like a Yogg-Sothoth or anything like this. It's a very simple creature, but it's interesting nonetheless. And the description of it um, is interesting as well, you know, sort of like the horrific million mouths, uh, crab-like uh, pincers and such. Um, yeah. You know, I thought that was very interesting to make something that's some, not just something that's out there, you know, we got no fucking chance. Uh, of course, there are implications that there are other things, and since this uh, museum does feature real life creatures which have been preserved, uh, they are, it's not just like, oh, well, we took care of the big bad entity, now there's nothing to worry about. The survivor, the protagonist at the end, He's seen a lot, and he knows now that the things that Jones preserved are actually real. So that plays a big role in um, the horror of it, you know. It's not game over, basically. And, yeah, it's a really cool story. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I've read it a few times, but when I make these videos, I always like to reread, make more notes. A lot of these notes are quite old already, and I just added some more. Uh, it's a great story. I really recommend it. There's a lot of name dropping. Like this one also, I don't know. Nof care. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> I have a feeling that at this stage in Lovecraft's career, remember this was coming in 1932, um, and he died shortly after, you know, a few years later. He had already written a lot and made contacts with others. You know, like for example, at the beginning of the story, you see from Clark Ashton Smith. His characters are mentioned, also the Chochos, you know, these are uh, common characters and entities and names you'll see in the mythos. Unersprechlichen Kulten, Book of Ibon, you know, this is not love, these are not Lovecraft's inventions. So it's a very mythos rich tale, it's a lot of fun to read. Um, what else do I have to say about this book, really? Uh, this uh, short story. Not much. It's a, a longer read. It's longer than Dagon, as, a, as I perhaps said already. Uh, but it's very enjoyable. But it doesn't have the, the depth, perhaps, of Call of Cthulhu or something like this. Uh, or the Mountains of Madness. It's nowhere near as epic. But it is a very fun read. Uh, five stars. How much do I give it? Let's go with a three. Three and a fraction. Stars. I'll give it for that much. Um, would I recommend it? Yeah. And I think it is one of the better ghost-written stories that Lovecraft has done. It's obviously for this reason that they've put it on the cover, you know, because uh, this book has many um, ghost-written, co-written, you know, that type of stuff in Lovecraft's career. And this book is really great. I always recommend it to people. Uh, you know, if you want a book out there, to, to do some extra reading if you've read through Lovecraft's main stuff. Pick this up, it's so damn cheap. You can get this on sale. Uh, I always get my books from Book Depository and usually it goes on sale and it's like three, three bucks something. If it's not, then it's usually about five bucks and you get a lot of literature. And a lot of these stories are very good. Out of the Eons, it's very good. Um, the Mound was excellent. Uh, yeah. In Prison with the Pharaohs was also excellent. Um, it's a very good book, and surely I will do another story here very soon. That's all I really have to say about the horror in the museum. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If there is another story you'd like to do, uh, let me know. Uh, if I have it, I'll read it happily. And if you generally like these videos, and these videos do pretty well, let me know. Check the video description for other websites where you can find my content. Um, subscribing is always nice. I'm almost at 15,000. That's pretty cool. I never thought I'd reach so far. So that's very cool. And I just want to thank everyone for giving some time to listen to me go on. But a weird tale. Alright guys, keep well, have a good night, and see you soon. Cheers.